How's it going everybody? This is Echo Papa and today we're going to be talking about Virtual DJ8 script concepts. Uh, we're not actually going to get into any real scripting. We're just going to talk about the ideas behind scripts and uh, what makes it so easy to use and some of the things that you can do with it. So, uh, what is script? Well, it's a VDJ script. That's the name of it. And obviously it stands for Virtual DJ Script. And we're just going to call it script from here on out. Um, script is the language that the DJ you talk to the virtual DJ engine via skins, controllers, keyboards, and custom buttons and knobs. Basically, anything that you can program, you can use this language uh, to put commands in uh, to make it basically uh, do whatever you want. Now, the same commands can be used with different mediums. Like, for example, in, in this case, play pause can be used on the skin, the controller, and the keyboard. And this is pretty well universal everywhere. You can use the same commands over and over again. So if you find uh, that you've made a a command, whether it be simple or fancy, that you like on uh, one system, uh, you can uh, skin Virtual DJ and program it, program it into the skin, or you can put it into a controller or map it to your keyboard. Uh, another cool thing is that you can, uh, they now have in Virtual DJ 8, the custom buttons and the, the custom knob, which is really cool because if you have like an idea that you just want to try out, but you don't necessarily want to remap everything every time, you can just program it into these uh, uh, one of these buttons or to this knob and uh, it, it makes uh, testing out stuff really easy plus you know if you find something really cool that you want to leave up there uh, you can so that's what virtual DJ script is let's go ahead and talk about commands now commands uh, they call them verbs are how you tell virtual DJ what action to perform and there's a whole lot of different commands uh, and they fall into a few different categories you have uh, just the command like in this case, this is the command hot cue. Command and a modifier. That's where you tell the command and then you also put a little extra information behind it. Uh, it's not always uh, information like this where it's, it just tells it, like in this case, hot cue one. Uh, it could be like, say, if you're using the load command to, to load up a file, it could be the, uh, the name of the file. Uh, the other one is command and command. That's where basically you just link two commands together using the ampersand sign. Uh, in this case, hot cue and sync. And if you were to put this into, say, a button, it's going to do just what you think it is. It's going to fire off the default hot cue, and it's going to sync it at the same time. And then deck select and command. And that's basically where you tell it specifically what deck you want that command to operate off of. So, uh, like, for example, these two here, if this was just in a button that wasn't assigned to a side, uh, this would just go to the default hot cue on the default deck. Where this one, deck two, is going to specifically go to deck cue, uh, deck two uh, and you can use combinations of these in this case deck two hot cue one and sync so it's going to do uh, the deck two fire up hot cue but specifically hot cue number one and it's going to sync now here's some examples of some different commands that you can use uh, plus some of their modifiers uh, sync auto mix go to uh, cue nudge uh, these are just some pretty cool different stuff uh, that you can do now we're not going to go into the different uh, examples themselves but um, uh, there's a lot of commands if you go to virtualdj.com and uh, you go and find their list of verbs I mean the list is massive so uh, there's a whole lot of uh, cool stuff that you can do next is the left and right deck now most commands assume that when you want uh, that when you press the left deck for example on a controller that you want it to play the left deck in Virtual DJ. Now this eliminates the need to program both sides of, the dev of a device. And so if you have a controller um, and the controller, you know, like 90% of controllers has a left and a right side, when you go to map that, you only have to map one side. You don't have to map both sides. You know, it assumes that if you take the play button and you tell that if the play button it's going to be play pause, it assumes that, well, he wants the play button on the right side to be play pause too, so you don't have to do it twice, which makes it really convenient. So that's some of the commands and roughly how the commands work. Next, we're going to go to conditional branching. This is where Virtual DJ starts to get pretty cool, and this is where your programming can get pretty powerful. Now, you can use script to ask Virtual DJ a question and then perform different actions depending on the response. Now, each conditional branch, or each question basically, has three parts. The question, if the answer is yes, then perform an action, or otherwise do this other action. All right, this is the syntax. Now, first of all, you have the question, and this is the question that you ask Virtual DJ. Next, it's going to be followed by a question mark, and that just tells it 
that whatever is in front of this question mark is actually the question and not another command because some of the questions also look like commands and that's why that's there. The next part is command one. This would be the command that it fires off if the answer to the question is yes. And then there's a little colon and then followed by command two. This would be the command that it fires off if the answer to the question is no. Now keep in mind these, these could also be nothing. Nothing is literally a command. So it could be, you know, here's our question. If the answer is yes, play the track, otherwise do nothing. And sometimes that comes in handy when you're uh, programming to just put that in there as kind of a, a, a holder. Uh, here's an example. Play, question mark. Now normally if you were to put play in there by itself, it's going to play the track. But in this case, because we have a question mark in there, it's going to take it like it's a question. Play, in this case, is the track playing. And then if the track is playing, pause it. Otherwise, play it. So this is going to act like a play pause command. So if, if you were to press this button and the track was already playing, it would pause it. Otherwise, it would play the track. Now, let's come to Echo Papa's Sandwich Shop. Echo Papa Sandwich Shop is something I came up with because a lot of people get really confused when it comes to conditional branching, and this is, is not specific to Virtual DJ. This is any kind of scripting or programming. If you've never come across conditional branching before, it can be very confusing. So we got the new sandwich shop, Echo Papa Sandwiches. Now, here's your coworkers. You're sitting around, time for lunch. You want to try out the new sandwich shop. So here's what you, <clears throat> here's what your friend tells you. They say. Go down there. Do they have subs? Well, if so, get me a meatball sub. But otherwise, just get me a BLT. Okay, now this is something that, you know, you come across every day. And conditional branching is the exact same way. Now, if this was a virtual DJ script, uh, then we would uh, do it just like this. Do they have subs? If so, get me a meatball. Otherwise, get me a BLT. Now, there's also nested conditional branches. And that's a question inside of a question. Okay, now this is an example of nested questions. And if you're doing really complicated commands, uh, this comes in really handy. But it can be really kind of confusing, uh, especially if you've never seen stuff like this before. Uh, in this case, that's going to be question one. If, you f if question one is yes, then go to question two. If question two is correct, then fire off command one. But if question one is yes and question two is no, then you're going to do command two. But if question one is no and question three is yes, then you're going to go to command three. Otherwise, question three is, is no along with question one being no, then you're going to fire off command four. That sounds pretty confusing, you know, especially if, you know, if this is something new to you. So we're going to go back to Echo Papa Sandwich Shop. And this is where uh, stuff like this, we can translate it into something every day that, uh, that you guys use. Now we're going to go back to the sandwich shop. And this time your coworker says to you, hey, do they have subs? Well, if they do, do they have meatball subs? And if so, I'll take a meatball sub with cheese. Otherwise, I will take a turkey sub with olives. But if they don't have subs, then check if they have BLTs. If they have those, then give me a BLT with extra bacon. Otherwise, just give me a ham sandwich. Now, this is stuff that we come across every day in our everyday lives. So we can really break it down to something more like this. Do they have subs? Yes. Do they have meatball subs? If they have meatball subs, then a meatball sub with cheese, otherwise a turkey sub with olives. No. Do they have BLTs? Maybe BLT with extra bacon? No ham sandwich. Well, this works in Virtual DJ script also, and it would look kind of like this if, if, uh, if Virtual DJ did sandwiches. It'd be, you know, this is the exact same line that we had before, okay, except for now we've turned it into everyday stuff. Do they have subs? Yes. Well, do they have meatball subs? Yes. They give me a meatball and cheese. Do they have subs? Yes. Meatball? No. Well, then give me a turkey and olive. But if they don't have subs, do they have BLTs? If they do, give me a BLT with extra bacon. If they don't have BLTs, just give me a ham sandwich. So now it starts to make a little bit more sense. Uh, these are the kind of commands uh, you just have to keep in mind how you map them out, and if you think about it logically, you can come up with some pretty cool stuff. For example, this right here, this is an uh, example of multi-nested conditional branching, and uh, you might take one look at it and say, wow, those four lines are, uh, are some pretty complicated commands, but they're not. That's actually one long command, and it's just one question into the next question into the next question into the next question and so on and so forth. So it can get pretty complicated but you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. So that's what conditional branching looks like. Next we're going to go into variables. 
Now, variables are data holders that can be modified at virtual DJ operates. Now, think of variables, they're like a bucket, and you can put anything you want into your bucket. Okay, now, here's some examples of stuff that we can do. You can use a flag. If you don't know what a flag is, a flag is basically, you know, uh, yes or no. That's basically what it is, yes or no. Uh, a counter, and that's something where uh, it's going to, uh, you can make it count up, you know, one, two, three, four, five, as high as you want. Uh, the next one is song data and also states of virtual DJ. Like, for example, that question that we had in the last one where it was play question mark, well, that's a state of virtual DJ is the track playing. Now, variables can either be locked to a deck side or they can be global across the VDJ platform. This allows you to reuse the variables when on a deck specific operation, like, for example, play or pause, or have one variable when it's not. Uh, and there's a, some variables that you want to be go all the way across virtual DJ. The sampler is one of them because the sampler does not really lock to either one of the decks. So if you have, uh, say, a command that's talking to, say, both a deck and to the sampler, you would want that uh, to be global. Now, here's global variables. They start with a dollar sign, and local variables start with a percentage sign, or you can put no prefix in there. Uh, I haven't done a ton of these, but every time that I do a local variable, local being you know, lock to a deck, uh, then I always put the percentage size in, into it just because, you know, it just makes it easier for me to read. Um, so in this case, if we were to, you can make the, you can name those variables anything you want. In this case, I've named two variables, Echo Papa and Echo Papa. Now, because this one has a dollar sign into it, this is global across all of Virtual DJ. This one is locked to a deck. So the upside, too, of having these uh the local ones is like, for example, let's say you program a really cool script and uh, you plug it into a button. Okay. Now you can copy that entire script from one side and then use it on the other side. And you don't have to change this from say echo Papa left deck and then echo Papa right deck. You know, you can just use the same command because it's only going to remember it for that one deck where this one would remember it for both sides. Now, Virtual DJ does not care what reads or modifies a variable. They are cross-skin and cross-device. Uh, for example, the shift key. Like, you can program a shift key um, to activate a variable, and then you can program your, say, keyboard, your controller, the skin, to all read and uh, change their actions depending on that shift key. Uh, for example, um, a load button. You might have it say... Um, Press the button, load the track. Are they holding the shift key? And you press the button, now uh, unload the track. So uh, and so you might be holding the shift key down, say, on a, one controller, uh, and then pressing that load button on another controller. Uh, it doesn't care, because actually all that, that virtual DJ script is actually running inside the engine. It's not really running on uh, inside the controller itself. Now, you can modify the variables in scripts with commands. Uh, for example, set echo papa equals 10. And that's what's going to give the variable a specific value. In this case, uh, if you were to read the, valuable, the value of, you know, percentage sign echo papa, it would be, it would give you the answer 10. You can toggle it. That's basically to change it from yes to no. And that goes back to those flags that we talked about in the beginning. And then the last one, cycle. And then those are good for counters. Uh, because, for example, if you might want uh, something to do five different things, and then uh, you can make it count or cycle, and uh, when it comes back to it, every time it's going to perform a different function. So cycles can be uh, can be pretty handy too. Now you can read the variables to determine their value. Uh, here's what some of the commands look like: uh, variable percentage echo, echo papa, variable equal to percentage item echo papa variable not equal to, greater than, smaller than. You know, what we would use uh, some of these for would be like, for example, the equal sign. You know, remember on that last part where we said, uh, let's go echo papa equals 10. You might have a question and a button. You press a button and it, and it asks the question, um, equal sign, the, or variable equal, uh, echo papa, does it equal 10? And uh, if the answer is yes, it can do one thing. If the answer is no, it can do something else. In the same uh, way, you could do not equal to, greater than, smaller, uh, all kinds of options there for you. Now, you can use that decision to make decisions. Like, for example, here is some of the, uh, the conditional branching that we had before. 
Uh, in this case, we have the command variable equals echo papa zero question mark. And now it's going to say, okay, well, all this is a question. And it's going to be the variable does the equal, and then here's the variable, and then here's the answer. So does this equal zero? If so, loop in, otherwise loop out. So let's say that this was a flag. And what you're using is say yes or no, or you can use zero and one. Then you can use one button to mean the same thing. And if, uh, let's say you press the button and this echo papa is zero, then it would loop in. But then if it doesn't equal zero, and you hit that button, then the command would be loop out. Same thing with this, smaller. If uh, the value of echo papa is smaller than four, then it's going to do a dump. Otherwise, it would do a backspin. In this case, not equal to. So if it's the answer to echo papa is not one, then it's going to load a track, otherwise unload a track. So those are variables and uh, some of the cool things that you can do with them. So in conclusion, you can use a combination of commands, conditional branching, and variables, and you can make Virtual DJ do nearly anything. And that's the truth. You know, I uh, I don't do a lot of complex commands, but uh, you know, if you go back to some of the other videos, when you do uh, look at things like, um, for example, mapping two effects to one button, well. Uh, that's basically just linking two commands together and uh, you can do some pretty fun stuff so anyway that's a virtual dj8 script concepts and my name is echo papa and i will talk to you later